All right, today we're gonna to be talking about German volume train, good old GVT. All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about German volume training and what it is and what it is not, as well as some special considerations to take into account when you're performing German volume training. Out there right now on YouTube, there's multiple videos discussing German volume training, but so many of them either miss the mark on what it is, or they forget to give credit where credit is due on it, or they're just trying to find ways to make it novel and interesting for people. The fact of the matter is German volume training is not a very interesting program. It's very rudimentary building block basis training program. Where it comes from is East Germany and how it got the name German volume training was Charles Poliquin when he was upcoming as a strength coach in the 80s actually visited some of these places and learned firsthand from German weightlifting uh, coaches on how they take a weightlifter and they quickly move them up to the next weight class and what many of them were using was what we call German volume training. So I'm going to just discuss the classical system of GVT, the 10 by 10, so 10 sets by 10. Now GVT it's very basic in the exercises that it uses. It's only going to be for the most part using the big building block movements. You're going to be using for the most part compound movements with only a few isolation exercises mixed into the bunch. Now, German volume training is something that you do in, on a five day split. So what this means is throw the seven day week out the window. You're gonna be performing three workouts per five days, repeating them six times throughout 30 days. So it's gonna go, you're gonna go with a chest and back workout, legs and abs, this is day one, day two, day three off, day four is shoulders and arms, and day five is off again. And then on day six, you restart on day one again. So if you were to start this on a Monday, you'd go Monday, chest and back, Tuesday, legs and abs, Wednesday off, Thursday, arms and shoulders, Friday off, Saturday, you restart with chest and back, and you carry on until you've gone through this six times over the course of 30 days. Each of the workouts themselves are actually divided into kind of two parts. You have your A series, A1, A2, and then you have a B series, B1, B2. The A series is where you do the 10 sets of 10. So this is those big prime mover exercises. If you're doing legs, you're gonna do squats. If you're doing uh, back, you're gonna be doing a chin-up variation. So it's taking some big, best bang of your buck exercises and using them for very high volume. You're not going to be going and getting onto the pec deck and doing 10 sets of 10 or 10 sets of 10 on the leg extensions. You're going to be saving the accessory work for the B series where you're only going to be doing three sets of 10 to 12. Now, when you're looking at the 10 sets of 10, the thing to keep in mind is you're going to have a little bit of moderate rest between exercises. So you're going to go, you'll do a set, say if you're doing the leg workout of 10 sets of 10, you'll do one set of 10. You'll take 60 to 90 seconds, depending on the shape you're in and depending on uh, the weight that you're using. And then you're going to do your A2, which is going to be a leg curl variation. Most commonly, it's going to be a prone leg curl. At the end of this, I'm going to actually include three sample workouts of German volume training and quickly just go over each of the workouts and how to perform them. So something to keep in mind when you're looking at the number of reps and the weight to use is you should be looking at a weight when you're first starting out with GVT that you could actually take for 20 reps if you're doing one set. The reason for this is when you're doing 10 sets, 100 reps total of a single exercise, the cumulative fatigue is what actually breaks you down. It's not really getting tired from a single set. It's when you get to set six, seven, that all of a sudden you can have this massive drop off. You might even drop off from doing nine, 10 reps down to doing six reps on say set seven. And then all of a sudden on set nine or 10, you have this second wind of energy or strength all of a sudden come out of nowhere it seems. And you're able to get eight, nine, 10 reps again. The reason for this is your body gets into a little bit of a fight or flight response you're gonna get better neural firing from your nervous system. It's gonna be like, oh crap, I gotta get this off of me, otherwise I'm gonna get stuck here. So all of a sudden, all your type two fibers that are already fatigued, they kick in a little bit harder all of a sudden, and then your type one muscle fibers, the slower twist, they kick in as well, and you're able to kind of grind out a couple of reps. So on your B series, you should be looking at exercises that are a little more accessory in nature. Uh, so you, this is where you would do your chest flies, your calf raises, your ab pull-ins, hanging leg raises, uh, some hammer curls, 
uh, some rows. This is where you put them in. You put them in the B series. Anything for the most part that is single joint will move more into the B series. This is with the exception of the leg curl and the exception of if you're doing the arm exercise where you're gonna be doing bicep curls. Bicep curls can handle a little bit more volume because we use our arms a little bit more every day. So just keep that in mind. But also, you're not gonna be using a heavy weight. You're gonna be using a weight that you can handle, like I said before, for 20 reps for a single set. Now, the difference between the leg workout and an arm workout is you might also be taking a little bit longer rest on the leg workout, because let's be honest, doing a heavy set of squats takes a lot longer to recover from than doing some curls. Also, keep in mind, when you're doing all of these, the A series, you're gonna have a slower tempo. You're looking at three or four seconds on the eccentric or the lowering portion of the exercise. And then you're gonna have relatively quick intent to lift the, the weight for one second. So don't be thinking that you're gonna be going down for three, four, five seconds, and then coming up for three, four, five seconds. You'll be using a weight that's one extremely and almost uh, inadequately light to stimulate any real training response. And you're also gonna to be too fatigued by the time you get to the latter reps to be able to complete 10 reps with that kind of very slow tempo. So if you're there sitting and writing out your own program for German volume training, just think the A series, your big prime movers. That's what you wanna focus on here. You don't wanna be putting in the little things. You wanna be putting in the big things that are gonna get you your best bang for your buck. Presses, chins, squats, deadlifts, stuff that uses a lot of muscle mass at the same time. Stuff that you can handle heavier loads on. And now also remember, for all six workouts of this, you're gonna be using the same exercises for each time you do the workout. You're not gonna be changing it every workout. The purpose behind this is you wanna to try to keep increasing the weight each time so that you can get true progressive overload. And this way you can actually see, did I progress? Did I fall off somewhere? So you gotta keep that in mind. Cycle one all the way through six, you're gonna be doing, if you choose bench press, you're gonna do bench press. If you choose back squat, you're gonna do back squat for all six repetitions of the workout. So what is German volume training for? It's actually set up so that you're putting on a lot of muscle mass as quickly as possible. It's one of the most effective programs for this. Now, yes, there are research studies out there using untrained individuals in a little bit of a controlled lab setting where they show that doing five sets of an exercise will actually be as or more beneficial for increasing muscle mass. But what they don't take into consideration in these studies is that a lot of them, they don't use adequate weight. The trainees are too green behind the ears, so they don't actually have the neural firing to be able to perform German volume training the way it's set up and designed to do. Now, on that note, this is not a program that should be done by somebody who is a new trainee. The reason I say this is they're not able to handle a heavy enough load to make it sufficient for them, as well, they're not gonna be able to recover in three or four days. They're gonna be pretty wiped out for a week, maybe even longer in some cases. Like, just think about how you feel after doing a hard leg workout. You're usually pretty fried for three or four days if you don't recover very well. New trainees, they, their doms, their muscle soreness lasts longer because they're not, their bodies just aren't as efficient at one, recovering, and two, their bodies are still figuring out, oh, how do I actually do this exercise properly? So some other things that German volume training can definitely be beneficial for is an improvement in body composition because you're doing so much work in a small amount of time, you're gonna be building up a lot of lactate. And this lactate is gonna to lead to increases in fat mobilization, and then you're gonna lose body fat, which means that you're gonna look leaner, you're gonna have a better physique overall from it. And when you add on a little bit of muscle while also simultaneously losing fat, the result aesthetically will always look nice. And then the benefits health-wise is, hey, you no longer have as much body fat that you're carrying. And on the same note of, because you're doing so much work in a shortened amount of time, is you're actually gonna improve your work capacity. By doing GVT, you're able to take 60% of your 1RM, and you're able to do it for the full 10 sets of 10, and each week you've added a little bit of weight to this. By the time you go back to doing, say, 175 or 200 on the bench press for three sets of 10 again, 
it's going to seem a lot easier because your work capacity has been taken up to another level. As you improve your work capacity, you're able to then take less rest between sets, so you're able to do more work, and then you're also able to take the same weight that you did before and push it for potentially a few extra reps. Anytime you're able to add a couple of extra reps, you're benefiting yourself in the long term because you're, one, improving neuro, uh, you're improving neurological drive, and two, you're increasing the mechanical tension on the muscle. If your goal is, overall is hypertrophy or muscle building, you're now causing more trauma to the system. More trauma to the system means you have to recover. When you recover fully between each workout, you get more progress in the long term. Now, a nutritional consideration to keep in mind when you're doing this is you should always ensure that you're getting an adequate amount of protein after every session, as well as an adequate amount daily. I personally recommend one gram per pound of body weight or 2.2 grams per kilo of body weight just to help your body recover a little bit better. Well, protein is going to be the main driver for muscle protein synthesis or your recovery in order for you to be able to come five days later and do the same workout again and get the maximal desired effect from it. I'm not going to get into what supplements to take for this uh, just because there's so many of them out there and there's so much conflicting information about this. I'll save that for another video another time. But for the most part, you need to make sure that you're getting enough protein. A post-workout protein shake will help you hit the protein numbers. So I would recommend that you take a protein sh shake afterwards just for that simple fact alone. And when you're doing German volume training, don't worry about trying to be in a massive caloric deficit. You need to be getting enough Food into you to be able to recover from this and remember the goal behind GVT is to actually put on muscle mass so you need to have enough calories coming in every day for you to use that protein to then stimulate muscle growth now say you've gone through six full cycles of German volume training something you got to keep in mind at this point is that you need to take a little bit of time off you need a massive deload after this you've just done for example, 600 reps in a month of back squat. You've done 600 dips, for example. This is a lot of cumulative volume to be taking on. So now your body needs a little bit of a back off. So you take a week, you do the easiest workouts you've done in a while. Uh, you still go through the motions, you still push yourself a little bit, but not to the point where you're going to failure. You push yourself to kind of just get a stimulation effect going on. And now you do this for a week, and after that you start a new program. You don't jump right back into German volume training a second time, right back to back. One of the reasons for this is you're gonna get less returns the second time you do it than you did on the first. So you need to space out the number of times that you do GVT in a training year, and you need to space out just for your body to be able to recover and get the maximal effect from the program. Otherwise, it starts to lose its effectiveness fairly quickly if you keep beating the horse over and over. All right, so let's go over a sample GVT workout uh, program. So day one, you're going to have your chest and back workout. So this is going to be, as you see on the screen right now, bench press supersetted with chin-ups. So when you look at what's... So what you're going to see on your screen right now is bench press supersetted with chin-ups. Very simple, run-of-the-mill exercises, but they're very big bang-for-your-buck movements. The second series is cable flies on the incline bench and seated row. So this is kind of like that accessory, just a little bit of extra volume in a different direction and a different uh, movement. Day two is your legs and abs. So A1 being your back squat, so a nice regular high bar back squat, getting nice and deep. A2, prone leg curls where your feet stay dorsiflex. So what this is, is you're just keeping your toes pulled up so that you can keep your hamstrings as strong as possible and have the calf help out just a little bit. B1, seated calf raises. B2, hanging leg raises. So you just do this at a chin up bar. You just hop up, hang from the bar and you do some hanging leg raises. You can, If you want an extra challenge, bring the toes all the way up to the bar. But what you really want to focus on here is feeling your abs do the work. Not so much your hip flexor and quad helping out with the work, but more just pulling your hips up and under you. Day three, we've got the arm work, the shoulders and arms. So start out preacher curl with the easy curl bar. Everyone knows what this looks like. 
uh, A2 behind the neck press. So you're just going to be standing up with barbell. It starts off in like a squat position. But instead of doing a squat, you're just going to take the bar and push it up over your head. Now be careful when you're doing this because you might crack yourself in the back of the head. So when you're coming down and pressing up, keep that in mind. Uh, you may need to move your head out of the way of the bar. B1, we've got incline hammer curls. So you're going to be sitting back on a bench that's uh, at a 45 degree angle doing your hammer curls. And then we got B2 being decline skull crushers. So with this, you're just going to lay on a decline bench, grab two dumbbells, and you're going to keep them in a neutral grip. So just like the hammer curl grip, but now you're going to be doing skull crushers. So you bring the dumbbells down right down to beside your ears, and then you extend the elbow out so that your arm is nice and straight overhead. Now, I hope you enjoyed that GVT workout. Give it a try. I guarantee you it's going to be a lot more brutal than it might look on paper, but that's the magic of German volume training. The magic behind German volume training is that it is very simple, big bang for your buck exercises that are just used very effectively. All right, thank you for watching right to the end of this video. If you'd like to see more content by me, click the subscribe button here. And for another YouTube suggested video by me, click here. And if you liked what you saw today, don't forget, click the little like button below. Until next time, Coach Tony, Wrestling Podium Performance.